Arija started around 1979. We had a following as a covers band before we even released any music, so we knew that all we had to do was write our own songs and then it should be okay. Looking around, it's like, well, no one's doing polyfunk. Because we couldn't afford any studio time, and I started recording demos just in the home studio with a double headed tape deck. When people talk about Arisha, they say, oh, that's the polyfunk. We are Polynesians from this part of the world, and I think that that's what gives us our own flavour. And the funk is the groove. We did a demo, four songs, and actually scored a deal with Hagen Records. The progression from there was like a, a full-on album, you know? And then we won the first Rhinec Rock Award. It's the biggest prize ever offered to a local rock band. Probably the biggest fans were the winners themselves. Popular Auckland soul band Adi Jar. The money will enable the group to record its first ever album. 30 grand, a lot of money in the 80s. Whoa, it's a lot of money now. The main thing about producing a record is knowing what each vision is for each song and being confident in those decisions and then being able to execute those decisions. It's hard enough to create music, but the real challenge of recording your song is finding a way to communicate in a studio. Auckland's Mandrill Studios. We recorded in Mandrill. The problem was all we were used to was doing recordings in our backyard, you know, in the garage. So it was about me learning how to use a real studio. I knew what I wanted in my head, but I didn't know how to communicate with engineers. Some of these guys only did rock, so it was hard to get that polyfunk R&B feel. We did have to make a stand on that sound that we were trying to get. That was the beginning of Ryan really being able to communicate. I think he just needed to trust himself, and he did, because it's reflected in watching you. With the song Watching You, I don't know why, the record company weren't happy with that song. So I got it recorded on my own at Mascot Studios in Mount Eden. So we believed in it and we thought, we've got to get this song out because it's just beautiful. Welcome to Telethon. Ahead of us, 24 hours of magic, music, mayhem and entertainment right around the country. We got it onto the telethon and it just went off. People would ring the radio stations and request it. That song that was on telephone by Arija. Have you guys got it? And then the record company's phones just went nuts. Where do we get that song from? So I said, oh, I've already recorded it. Here's the masters. And they went, oh, great. So they went and printed up some records. And as local records move up the charts, the musicians gain more confidence at in-store signing sessions. Arija, this week, number six with a bullet. Furthest it got was number three in the charts, so it just didn't make it to one. But the album went platinum, so great success with that song, helping that album. The recording is beautiful, I love it. And it connected to people, you know, really resonated to them. A neighborhood, you know, they don't kind of like, oh, heard your song on the radio. Tons of DJs have said, you know, every time they have problems at their clubs with um, people not dancing, they just whack that on and then warm. Those things mean a lot to me because people are listening. They feel the vibe in that song. It's done us well and it'll be with us till the end.